Good morning, everyone. We are continuing here in the Hilchis Kashrus, and today's paragraph is Har Chokais Shebein Mosav Echolov, the distance, so to speak, between meat and milk. What does that mean? Oigaz v'chazal, chazal have also decreed. Shelo liyechol basa b'yachad yim cholav. You cannot eat meat and milk together. What we spoke about so far is cooking meat and milk together. But now you cannot eat meat and milk together. So too, they said that you cannot have, you cannot bring meat onto a table where you're eating cheese. So to the opposite, don't bring cheese or milk onto a table that you're already eating meat from. Now we're going to see the, the different details and qualifications of this law. Whether you're sitting next to each other, this one's sitting across the table, you can't do such a thing. Two people cannot eat on the same table over here. If this one is eating meat and that one's eating cheese, if they know, they recognize each other, their, their acquaintances at least, why? Ki chazal, meaning again, originally, the first thing that he's saying is that I myself, if I have meat on the table, I cannot put cheese on the table. If I have cheese on the table, I cannot put meat on the table when I'm just sitting there by myself. But even if there's two other people, two people at the table, and each one is having their own meal, one is eating meat, and the other one is eating cheese, says Rav Forst, you can't do that either. If they are makirm, if they are acquaintances, they know each other. Why? were concerned. One will end up being comfortable with his friend and take from his friend's plate. And it comes out then, you're eating your hamburger. The other guy is eating his pizza. The pizza looks good to you. You reach over, you take a bite of the pizza. Whoops! You just ended up eating meat and milk together. We can't do such a thing. However, if you go to some table and someone's sitting there eating a hamburger, and you don't recognize the person, you guys are not acquaintances, and you're sitting there with your piece of pizza, in that case, says Rav Forrest, in that case, you don't have to worry that maybe you're going to end up taking food one from the other. You don't know each other, you wouldn't feel comfortable reaching out and grabbing somebody else's food, and the two of you could eat there at the same time. Even if the people do recognize, they know each other, they're acquaintances. They could still eat at the same table. As long as they make some kind of a simon, a sign, or a distinction between the two of them. For example, Each one eats on their own placemat. I have my placemat, you have your placemat. So that's a sign to us that we have different meals that are going on and that I won't reach over and take yours. That's only if you normally would not eat on separate placemats. Then it works. Or you put something on the table between the two of you that's like a sign to remind you that you're having two different meals, one meat and one milk, and you don't really recognize each other. Uh, and and you and it will it will block you and it's not usually there on the table. It has to be something that's a little bit higher up. That is a nicker that is obvious. For example, let's say there's no vase of flowers on the table and you put a vase of flowers between the two of you. So it's not normally on the table when you're eating and now you put it between the two of you. It's a reminder, I'm eating meat. This person's eating milk. I shouldn't take any food from their plate. Because when you do that, you remind yourself not to take food from each other. However, do not drink from the same glass. Do not eat from the same loaf of bread. Because your hands, let's say, you're eating meat, your hands are greasy, it will stick to the bread. And now I'm eating milk, so I'll get fleshy bread in my, in, with my milk. And don't eat from the, don't drink from the glass because you know how it is. There's backwash and there's oils and the like, and it gets into the glass. And therefore, if I have my pizza 
hands all over the glass and inside the cup, and you're having your hamburger, it's going to end up mixing with each other. Even someone who's eating the undomesticated animals and, and bird, chicken, you have to be careful with all of this. Even though that there's only rabbinical prohibitions, nevertheless, once we're careful, we're careful in all areas to make sure that we don't make a mistake and end up coming to eat basar v'chalav in a way that, of course, as we're saying, is aser midraisa, aser midrabanan for a person to do. Have a wonderful day.